Hi everyone, I want to talk a little bit about leveling up a fresh character at season start in Diablo 3. So this is quite important and you want to have a good start and you start from scratch with your level 1 character. This is not a leveling guide, so I will have an updated season 26 leveling guide for you guys, including all the little tips and tricks for different strategies and what to do. Here I mostly want to cover massacre bonuses a bit more in detail, because this is the number one thing to prioritize, especially when you are leveling solo. Massacre bonuses are very powerful, as you can see right in this moment. I just got straight up three levels for free, and this is something that a lot of people either are not aware of or simply have too much trouble actually doing effectively. But if you want to have a good time in a solo leveling run, then you need to figure out how to do this properly, and it is doable on every single class. Lately I have been speedrunning 1 to 70 season start situations on every single class and in some cases multiple times with different setups. So I just get a bit of a better understanding of how each class performs in a 1 to 70 season start scenario because some of them I've literally never leveled before like a crusader for example I've only done like once a few months ago or wizards are also not particularly spicy to level. So there are some really strong candidates, like the Necromancer, which is <laughs> straight up pay to win class basically, when it comes to 1 to 70 leveling. And then you have a few that are kind of like decent choices. Then there are some that are extremely hard, but will work pretty well if you can do it well. And there's you know some stuff like Wizard that straight up just sucks. So the range goes from you know one hour or even faster. Like I've been doing some 50 minute 1 to 70 runs. Uh, all the way up to like two and a half hours or so. So these are kind of like the ranges of where each of the classes will land if you execute this properly. So somewhere between one and two and a half hours if you get you know, quite lucky versus quite unlucky or not the worst classes. So for massacre bonuses, the number one zone in the game is the Temple of the Firstborn in Act 2. So this is where I almost exclusively level all my characters aside from Runes of Sestron and Elder Sanctum right at the start when you have to get the cube. So usually go there at level 1 and then it's Temple of the Firstborn all the way. Now this is something that I hope long term will be changed to some degree so, so there's a bit more variety and a bit more like reason to do other zones. But let's leave that aside. The reason why this zone is so good is because of all these little tomb roaches that spawn and give you lots of extra kills. Now this has two effects. Number one, first of all, you stack up this massacre bonus quite easily, but they also give quite low XP baseline. So just killing your tomb roaches is not exactly the best. So you want to go usually at a difficulty where you can kind of easily also defeat the bigger enemies because they actually give you a lot more XP and then this XP will get multiplied from this massacre bonus. So this is the basic idea of kind of going, like deciding which pace and which difficulty you want to go. So you want to like maybe two or three shot or so the bigger guys and you want to kind of one shot the Tomb Rogers and this is usually the difficulty to go for in every single scenario. Now sometimes this will be Torment 6 as you can see now when this is a low level reduction weapon and I have also a good cube weapon that I got at level 1 or after getting the cube which is the Dark Light for Fizzle of Heavens. So for a Crusader this would be pretty much the best case scenario and this turned out to be some 66 minute run or so. So nothing particularly exciting for a best case. But anyway, in other cases you might not get so lucky and you might only be able to do this on like Torment 3 or something or Torment 2. Or at the start, especially in the low levels when you're like level 10 or level 20 or so, you might not even have access to the right skills yet. You might just do this on Master Difficulty. So you always want to kind of go at a similar pace and then just adjust the difficulty to where it becomes comfortable to do exactly this pace that you have in mind. And then you have these Tomb Roaches. They are actually extremely useful to be kited and keep up this Massacre bonus. So as you can see here I'm at over 600. This one is going to end at 784 because I also managed to carry it into level 2, which you're going to see in a second. So you always find this uh, entrance to level 2 where Vizalius is located. And depending on the class and the skills you're using, you can actually keep up this bonus here while the door is opening and rush to something on the next floor to hit it and keep the chain going. Not super huge deal because floor 2 is extremely small, but you can usually get like another 100 or so enemies there. 
and you already have the stacked up massacre that will multiply their value as well. But in case you are trying to figure out how to do this better, you have to keep some of these tomb roaches alive to be kited. Now there's also some other like little tricks. For example, there's also this uh, cursed chest event. So almost every time you go into Temple of the Firstborn, there will be a cursed chest, either as a bounty or without. And this will also spawn three extra enemies for you. Now the problem comes when you actually finish this event and you have cleaned up the entire surrounding area of enemies and you want to grab that bonus XP from the chest or even loot the chest. Very often, in fact, I straight up just skip it and just kite the last remaining guys from this chest to the next area, to the next room, so that I can keep the massacre bonus rolling instead of actually looting the chest. Because usually you just get like a blue item or two blue yellow items or something like this which is not necessarily very exciting. So I found a clip of this right here, so you can see me finishing up this chest. And here I tried to kite the last guy, but I actually accidentally killed him. And then I also walked into the wrong corner, where this is the dead end. But I was lucky and I managed to find exactly this one dude coming out of this um, sarcophagus. And I was able to keep the massacre. So this could have been a disaster here, dropping it right at 200. So this is another of those cases where you might you might just restart the run and just, you know, reset and maybe you start over from scratch and you get a nice chain of massacre and then the first chest and so on. So this is also something I regularly do. When I mess up or when it drops like halfway in the run or so, I don't even try to start another massacre chain. I just try to, I just go next game and I reset. I go check out the vendors again because I probably gained a few levels and I get a bit of an upgrade on the fly as well. So this is also something to kind of keep in mind when uh, when you have like half the zone cleared, you don't really want to finish the rest because there's no reason to most of the time. Sometimes you might have a bounty and there's only like this one guy left here. Like now I've done the 50 kills and then you have to you know, kill or defeat that enemy or do this event. So this can be a little incentive to finish it. But most of the time you will go to difficulty where it's actually extremely hard to finish this one dude for the bounty. So most of the time I actually skip the bounties and it's just a waste of time trying to finish it in like a minute or something like that. So it always comes down a little bit to a gut feeling decision that I make here, depending on the, my character's power, depending on how easily I survive. So sometimes I'm also extremely squishy, like when you go in Torment 6 or Torment 5 or something like this, you get like one or two shot even by the little guys in most cases. And I'm leveling all my characters as hardcore characters. So if I die, I reset. So obviously I don't want to have that happen very much. So you gotta be careful. You gotta make sure you check the vendors. So literally after every single run, I check at least one or two vendors, especially Act 3 is nice because on the right you have an, two regular vendors and the ring vendor. So you can improve everything. And obviously usually around level 40 to 50 or so, you get this reduced level requirement weapon that you will try to craft when you are level one with the materials you get from the challenge rift. And usually when you equip that one, then you will be blasting and you can go straight up Torment 6 on pretty much any class, on pretty much any build, even when you don't have any gambled, like a big multiplier or upgraded weapon or something like this. You can just use that at least until around level 60 on a high Torment difficulty. And this is usually the point where the Reaper of Soul scaling kicks in, making everything a lot harder, a lot tankier and it's uh, much more difficult to stay on the high torments and finish the 60 to 70 journey. So usually you go lower and lower and lower difficulty after level 60 because your big level 70 weapon won't really have that much of an impact anymore. But it doesn't really matter all that much. So if you look at this example here, I was playing a barbarian and I think I only had Bastion's Revered and nothing else. So it was pretty crappy. This was a two and a half hour run. So one of the slowest ones I've ever done with yeah, basically a worst case RNG on the Barbarian almost. So this is one of those examples where it's really bad and it really slows down. But even here I was able to actually do Torment 3 at um, the higher levels, mostly because of the Furious Charge being a quite powerful skill. As you can see here, that's just a base Furious Charge actually destroying these pulls. And you can see I started here at like maybe two or three bars into level 64. And if we fast forward this a little bit, here towards the end of the massacre, I gained only half a level from all the kills, almost 300 kills. But then the massacre drops and you can see that I gained yet again pretty much the same XP or even more here with this times 3.25% XP bonus. 
So even if you have to reduce the difficulty on the higher torments, it's always worth doing those big massacres and rather going fast, rather getting a lot of kills at the same time. I know that all of this is easier said than done, but you have seen me do this in practice right now. You can also go back and study like my behavior, my movement and how I kite enemies. And I can also give a bit of pointers of what to do on each of the classes because of all the leveling I've done where I try to keep those massacre bonuses mostly. So just the top skills that I would recommend to try to include in your setup to keep out those massacre bonuses the easiest. On Barbarian, there's not really many options for ranged abilities. Weapon throw works really well though and also generates fury per attack, which is very nice. Same thing here on the Crusader, you have two ranged generators. Personally, I actually really like Smite because it's instant and it also potentially jumps and breaks a door or pulls other enemies. But Justice is also equally fine. There's also a rune that actually like auto targets later on. I think the Hammer of Pursuit. So that's pretty useful. On Demon Hunter, Bolas is extremely nice because you get the Massacre reset on the initial hit and after the one second delay, you get another explosion. You can even do, um, towards the end, you have 50, level 57, Imminent Doom, which has a two second delay. Like this, it's super easy to give up massacres because you just shoot once and you have literally like five, six seconds or so where you don't even have to shoot again because of this imminent doom delay that explodes and resets it again. On the monk, you don't really have great range skills. Theoretically, you can do some stuff like Wave of Light with um, Explosive Light, but this is very costly. You usually don't have the resources for this. So usually the best bet is to just keep something close to you at all times and usually you won't have sweeping wind in your setup at the very least when you are leveling without Kudus boots so if you got unlucky and you have to you know fight your way um, to victory on your own then you do sweeping wind because it's very nice free damage all the time and you essentially just dash like double or triple dash with quicksilver rune into another pack really quickly to try to keep up your massacres on the Necromancer, it's pretty straightforward. You have Bone Spikes, which can actually be cast through walls and around corners and all that stuff, so this is really useful. And you also have Bone Spear, because it flies very slowly. At least when you are leveling, uh, especially with Martorius Petrified Spike, then Bone Spear is quite useful because it has a really slow travel time. And then you can shoot in one direction, Blood Rush in the other, and then you can, for example, use Bone Spikes to keep up Massacres. Witch Doctor, you have two very powerful skills. Corpse Spiders, super good because they live, I think, four seconds. And as they hit enemies, they will reset your massacre the entire time. The other pets don't do this. So this is a specialty of Corpse Spiders because it's not actually a pet skill. So you summon these spiders, and but they count as like an ability hitting enemies. And the same thing with Locust Storm, you can cast it on an enemy and it will keep jumping. And every time it jumps to a new enemy, it will also reset timer. So Witch Doctor is by far the easiest class to do massacre bonuses, which is also one of the reasons why Witch Doctor is actually one of the best classes to level without any help. So if there was a world of no challenge with caches, Witch Doctor and possibly Necro would be the kings there. And finally, we have Wizard. Now Wizard is overall pretty weak in leveling, but you can just do it with a generator, ma magic missile, just like kite something, shoot, kite shoot so pretty straightforward you could also do some other stuff like uh, energy twister or so i guess would work but i found that skill to be performing extremely poorly and i didn't really want to give up a skill slot for it and also the resources so usually just kite and shoot with magic missile and this is also it for what i had to share here in this video so hope you enjoyed it i will have more leveling practice runs coming up almost daily because i've been doing quite a lot of them recently and you can see something for every class, even with different scenarios of RNG at the start. So hope you enjoyed this video. For more guides and tips, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time.